Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline, and welcome to another episode of Sky Stuff. Uh, I guess this would be episode 169, because apparently the last thing I made was my 168th video, of course. What a, what a way to start off. But anyway, a lot of people have been wondering where I am, and by a lot of people, I mean the 10 or so people in my Discord admin staff chat. Uh, you know, actually, I think I might have set another record accidentally for having the longest sustaining community despite such a long period of inactivity. In fact, they even made a bot we take a look they even made a bot i think video is the command video ah there we go why bot thank you very much toby for that it has been 483 days 11,602 hours 696,000 minutes or 41 million seconds that is a lot of seconds and you guys have been there to make every second along the way just make me feel bad sky why aren't you uploading just kidding I, th I think it's amazing, actually. I'm, it, there's actually no greater honor than people asking where you've been, because it means you've been remembered, which is pretty cool. So what have I been doing? Well, um, you know, one of the most difficult things about making this video was that it just feels a little weird. Like, I don't think I'm that special of a person, so it feels weird to come and be like the YouTube Messiah having come back. Like, oh, everyone pay attention to me now. I decided today's the day I wanted to come back. Therefore, I'm, I'm important. I just, everyone pay attention to me. So it feels kind of weird, but I'm gonna power through it because uh, I think that I actually did some kind of cool stuff that's worth sharing. Now, something that a lot of people do know is that the next game I went to after Overwatch was PUBG. One of my good friends and professional caster, Matt Oates, was like, hey, look at this PUBG game. It's pretty cool. I said, eh, I'm not really into survival games like Daisy and stuff. I don't like crafting in my shooting games. He said, no, it's not like that. Come play PUBG. It'll be pretty cool. I did. It was pretty cool. And so I made, a, or we, we collectively made a league, me, Matt, and some other, some other people in the group, uh, really passionate people, which wound up being the biggest PUBG league in North America and Europe. I eventually, I kept rolling with that and I became like a pro level caster. I was getting gigs, I was getting events to the point where I could have actually made it a full-time professional career at that point. So of course, because I had gotten to that point, I was like, yeah, well, yeah well, that was fun. Let's go try something else. So next I started doing more production related stuff like the nitty gritty. I would like run the productions. I would, you know, have OBS open and uh, like do all these complicated or maybe not super complicated but for me at the time it was complicated like um remote pulling people remotely make sure all the audio was good i would do in-game observing as well like the in-game camera for pubg was a huge problem at the time because it was just really hard um a lot of people who know a lot about the game are playing the game so there's uh, you know to take trap of to keep track of 80 people and know who's going to be where and know when to where to put the camera was something that not a lot of people or nobody really was able to do. So I did that and I became considered like the number one PUBG observer in the world in certain groups, or at least in North America, that was the consensus. And so I started getting gigs. I started getting a lot of jobs to the point where I actually could have made a full-time pro career out of observing, which is really hard for a freelancer. But I got to that point. So of course, because I got to that point, I was like, eh, all right, well, that was pretty fun. Let's go try something else. So the next thing I did was go to Las Vegas for a few months because they were having a big $100,000 PUBG LAN and they didn't really know anything about PUBG. The company did at the time. So I went there and I was one of the lead project managers planning the LAN. I did all the stuff from getting the admins to helping write the rules to coordinating players and helping the the broadcast team come up with broadcast strategies and content uh, ideas and stuff and it was really really fun it wound up being probably the best received PUBG LAN in North America and then later on that year they came out with the pro league and stuff but at the time back when it was just a bunch of independent tournament organizers it was probably one of the best received that's not something I can prove but I I think it was and um, after that I got offered a job so that I could actually work professionally full time 
doing, you know, project managing and doing stuff for live esports events. So of course I was like, eh, nah, that was fun, but I'll go try something else. Next up in my long list of random esports adventures was I started an esports uh, consulting company. Esports consultants are kind of a meme. So, you know, why not? I figured, I figured I'd do that. I had two partners and our first client was in Miami. They were a comic convention who wanted to add video games into their event. And um, it was, I mean, we went back and forth. It was kind of crazy. They were very difficult to work with. If they're watching, you know, you know you are. Uh, well, anyway, we landed on a Fortnite event, like a big multi-day Fortnite tournament where people could come and play Fortnite uh, against each other. They got prizes and there was a grand finals and they got a prize for the grand finals. We had some pretty big name influencers there actually that we managed to pull somehow like Hamlins and Myth. So that was pretty cool. But the coolest thing is that at the end of the event, actually the kid who won the grand finals, well, he was a kid, obviously. He was like nine years old. And he was telling me how his mother really didn't like video games. She was like, oh, video games are a waste of time. She really severely limited the amount of time he could actually play games. But she was really proud of him that he won this tournament, which really meant a lot to him because this was like a big passion of his. So it really, it, it made me tear up a little bit. I've got to say it was, su it was super awesome. But my consulting journey did not end there. Next, I went to Houston, Texas, where Ironically, as the surf, as the circle of life goes. So I didn't mention this earlier, but that PUBG league that I made, the one that was like the biggest in North America and Europe for a time. Well, I made it with a group of people. Uh, obviously, there is not with me. There was a group of admins who were very passionate, very, very good. But there was one guy who owned it. Um, this taught me a lot about business, by the way. So he wound up actually selling the the whole brand like behind my back and behind a couple of other, without telling a few other people he, he, he did tell some people but whatever he sold it off um I, I was like whatever i guess i'll just pass it off but i came back and this company that was a client of ours happened to be the company that bought that league which is nuts uh they had some productivity issues in their company uh, they had a great staff but some leadership issues and some direction issues but those, those are all fixed now. They're doing pretty well. I still actually do some leagues with them that they run. I help them do some other esports activations. So it's pretty cool. Uh, so I, I, I did that for a little bit. But next up was the big fish. And let me tell you, this, this one, this one, this was the lifespan sucker. This was the one that really got me uh, like 80 hours plus a week. So the next client was ESPN. Like the actual ESPN. They wanted to get into esports and run a league of some sort, so and they wanted to run a college league. So I was tasked with helping them create a college league that ended in a finals. Now this was in December, the finals was supposed to be in May, and it did actually happen in May, spoiler alert, and that's why I'm doing this now, is because it's done now, because it happened in May, and um, yeah, now I'm no longer working 80 to 100 hours a week. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, I worked with them and I had to plan everything. So remember back when I was in Vegas, I actually had a team that was working with me. They were all experienced. They had done these things before, or maybe if they hadn't, they had done similar things like that before. But here it was just me. That's it, it was just me with one other guy helping me. I mean, he was he's a brilliant guy, but basically the two of us help it, uh, just doing it. And uh, imagine everything that goes into running a league in a LAN and then multiply that by about five because there's a lot of things you just aren't thinking about because why would you think about them? Just things that are crazy like, oh, I don't know, um, making sure that you have enough electricity, <laughs> like uh, making sure that the rig, like the hanging on the on the ceiling and stuff is like up to code for the signs you're hanging. Like, I don't know, all sorts of crazy stuff. But anyway, I did it, the event worked, or we did it, I guess. Um, I should say, me and my partners, we did it. The event worked. ESPN is happy. I learned a lot. And that's that's just nuts. That's all I have to say about that. It was a really it was a really crazy experience. 
but um definitely i learned the most from that because i just had to do it i just had to do everything and i couldn't afford to mess up because of how important the client was obviously that was that was the last really big thing that happened and now it's now because the live event happened in may we ran like every we, we ran here's so many games too like I didn't realize how difficult, I didn't realize why. So uh, most organized orgs run only one game at a time and they usually run only two games or one game ever at all. It's because the amount of knowledge you need per game is a lot. And I just happened to know a lot about a lot of games, but it was still a, a hard time we had to do. Here's the Storm, Starcraft, Overwatch, um, Street Fighter, and I feel like I'm missing another game. Oh, Hearthstone. Hearthstone. We had to do five titles for this event. So it was a big challenge. But anyway, that was the last big thing I did. I also started producing. I also started uh, developing a game, which I'm still developing. It's a multiplayer co-op game. That's all I have to say about that for now, because who knows if I'll finish it. Hopefully I do, though. I'm making pretty good progress. Um, I also hit leaderboard on a few games, because why not? Got to flex my gamer muscles every, every now and then. And, um, oh, I did some also some side consulting with some actually kind of major game studios, not like major, not like no Naughty Dog, no Blizzard, but like, you know, these, these studios have like 30 plus employees. So they're relatively big studios with relatively decent games. But I think, I think that's about it. I only did like 12 different things over the course of the past 583 days. So, um, yeah, the real question though, is why why do it all i've been asked that before i've asked myself that before because i forgot halfway through why uh so i i had like six five, five i had like five different gaming slash esports pro careers that i had that i just said all right well let's just move on to the next thing let's scrap that and why did I do that? It was um, coaching, casting, I have a list here, observing, project managing, and producing esports shows. And uh, don't forget YouTube, also in there. I, uh, let's just say, I don't think that the views on this video are gonna be the same as the videos from two years ago when I was doing Overwatch. But um, in reality, it actually all goes back to YouTube. I ran into this problem where I could never really confidently talk about a lot of the things that I wanted to talk about, whether I thought that something was wrong or something was right, or I just had any sort of opinion at all. What I, what I would run into a lot is people saying, people in the industry saying, oh, well, you just don't have the experience. You just, you just don't know what it's like. You don't know what's happening behind the scenes. You can't, you can't comment on this because you just don't understand. And I could be 90% sure that they were full of crap. I could be 90% sure just from like logical deduction that there's no way that it could make sense the way they were saying, but they were right. Maybe there is something happening behind the scenes. Maybe there is stuff that I just didn't know. And uh, I just couldn't really take that risk. I didn't want to put a video out that thousands of or tens of thousands of people could potentially see or even hundreds of thousands of people could potentially see that I am only 90% sure about. For me, it's 99% or higher. Ideally, 99.9%. But anyway, the, the point is I just, I just didn't have the industry experience that I needed to really be 100% confident about a lot of the things I was saying. So I had to go get it. And that was sort of where the problem and the conflict arose. Because to get into esports, let's uh, let's just say you need to say the right things and um, make the right friends. Like, I mean, I, I had a couple problems really near the end, especially with Blizzard, actually. So, like, I made a video once, and Blizzard. So Blizzard never ever like messaged me at all. They would never answer my questions. Not that I really asked a lot, but like the two times I ever messaged, like the relevant person at Blizzard, they would never respond to me. But let me tell you, I made a video one time. Not even a really, not even bashing Blizzard, but in the video I mentioned that I I didn't really like sort of the balancing philosophy that they had done a few a couple times with heroes, where they would hit the core of the hero instead of hitting more topical things like damage numbers or cooldowns. If you, if you're, if you watch back then, you might remember the video. Um, it was talking about how like, you know, they would change heroes. They would just completely change it instead of 
being more reasonable with it. And they would change it in a way that really messed with the people who really loved the hero, uh, like Mercy, for example, um, or yeah, it, there's a whole gambit. I'm not going to get into it. But, but anyway, it wasn't overly bad. It was just like one thing in one video. And I got a message basically saying, oh, you know, I saw you say that thing in that video. And, uh, you know, if you want any future in esports or the industry with Blizzard titles, you can't say that stuff. And that really messed with me. That really messed with me. I uh, I was really torn by that because I'm like, wow, I, I, I wasn't even saying anything bad. I was the most positive channel. At least I try to be the most positive Overwatch channel on all of YouTube. And I actually, I think that I achieved it. I thought that overall, all of my videos were more level-headed and more positive and just, uh, I try to look at the good side of things where a lot of other channels would be very negative about things. So I was I was just sure shocked that they'd pick this one thing, like the one time I ever said anything bad and say, oh, you can't say that or else we're gonna basically blacklist you. I really, really messed with me. And that's actually also when my posting schedule got a little bit more erratic because like I said, I was just sort of disturbed by it. Um, some of my videos were kind of weird, honestly. I, didn't, I don't really like my last, I don't know, five, videos or maybe more um i thought they were a bit weird and not really my voice because again i was sort of torn between trying to be the voice that the industry wanted me to be if i ever wanted to have a job or to be honest and um it wound up being some sort of weird like in between that i just didn't like and that's act that's inevitably why i took a break because i just to make the content I wanted to make, I needed to have expertise and I needed to have experience so that I could be 100% certain that what I was saying was out of a place of, like I said, expertise and experience rather than ignorance, right? And that I wouldn't have people saying, oh, you know, you just, you, you just don't understand, you're not part of the industry and I'd be wrong, right? Um, but to get that experience, I needed to actually get into the industry and there's a problem, I couldn't be both honest on YouTube and garner the favor of people in positions that could actually get me places. So I decided that the only way to do it is to take a break from YouTube. And I think that honestly, at this point, I pretty much have all of the experience I could ever want or need. I don't think anyone could ever like question me or, or say anything like I don't have enough experience because I mean, where I've, I've like done three different live events. I've worked with multiple game studios. I've learned the process behind how developing a game works. I've worked with ESPN to make a league. I worked on like five other leagues that were all very successful. Like I've seen every single thing there is to see pretty much on both the business, the production, the staff, like every single side of esports and gaming, I've seen it all. So now I can confidently come back and just sort of make the, the stuff I wanna make without having the fear of needing to make anyone happy or pander to the esports insider crowd or just or, or be worried that my content isn't coming from a place of genuine expertise and knowledge. So that's why I left and that's why now I'm back. And um, I hope to deliver a lot of the same value that I used to deliver 580, 480, 483 days ago, not 500. That would be, I was like, that's a little too long. 483 days ago, um, the same type of content that I did in Overwatch, except just more like on a general level, right? Because a lot of the videos I made for Overwatch actually work for any game. And most of them weren't super specific. I had like hero guides and map guides, and yes, those were very specific, but a lot of other ones were mentality guides, you know, even the how to practice your aim thing that actually works for any skill or just any FPS game in general. So uh, I want to deliver a lot of that just in a more general sense and then also move forward and do a bunch of other different cool things as well. You know, honestly, I've never been more touched than by the messages that I used to receive from my Overwatch viewers. It was it was just <clears throat> it was just so cool, especially when people would say, like, you you changed my mind about this thing or uh, I really have a different perspective on the game or just games in general because of it. That's like the most fulfilling thing I could possibly ask for at all. And moving forward, I want to, 
I guess, remember and respect the people who um, are watching this video, for example, because you're definitely an OG Overwatch person, and uh, just the people who, who, who were, really were with me for the start of this video game esports journey that I've had. So definitely leave a comment down below or go to my Discord and direct message me or at me in Discord with the type of stuff you'd like to see. Because like I said, I already have an idea. I already have things I'm going to be talking about for the next couple of videos. But I really want to uh, not only deliver the content that I want, that I think will help people, but also the content that uh, you think would help yourself. Is there something that you've been looking for, a uh, video that you've searched for that just doesn't exist or doesn't exist in a form that you really would like it to exist in? Um, let me know. Uh, I also used to really dislike Twitch. The dog moves sides, by the way. I used to really dislike Twitch, but um, I've, I've actually come around to it and I'm really starting to see the value uh, in that it can help me sort of express some ideas a lot better than YouTube. And I, I actually want to get back to Twitch. So uh, over the next week, I'm going to try to come up with a regular streaming schedule again as well. It's going to be more of a variety thing. In, in case you didn't notice, I like to give myself challenges where I'll just pick a game and I'll say like, okay, I'm going to give myself two weeks to hit top 50 or like one month to hit top 500 or whatever in a, in a more in a bigger game. So um, I might just do those, like just do a bunch of those in a row. I think that could be really cool. I don't see anyone doing that. Like, honestly, I don't see people just like picking a game and nailing the leaderboard in two weeks like I do sometimes. So maybe that could be something to learn from because it's primarily a mindset thing. Like I, it's not a talent. Anyway, that's for a different video. We're not going to go there right now because I think I'm way over. I have no clue how long this video is. Probably, I'm going to say 13 minutes, which is actually not that over. Anyway, that's all for me. I, again, thank you everyone so much because if you're watching this video, that means that you stuck with me through almost a year and a half of inactivity, which is just absolutely insane. And, and it's an honor. Um, I don't know how many of you there are. There could be a hundred, there could be 200, a thousand. Highly doubt it's any more than that. So um, yeah, never forget to stay positive. And of course, as always, have a great day. I'll see you next time. I'll see you soon. I don't have any other videos to link them, Ducky. So we're just gonna chill here. Normally this is where the videos go. You get, you're like, oh, watch, watch more videos. But no, it's just you and me. Just you and me, buddy. I also don't have any more treats. That was my last one, sorry.